somebody probably should have told President Bush that today was the exact 135th anniversary to the day that President Grant suspended habeas corpus in much of South Carolina for the noble and urgent purpose of dispersing the Ku Klux Klan and making sure the freed slaves had all their voting rights, neither of which has yet truly occurred. Your principal defense against imprisonment without charge and trial without defense thrown away for no good reason, then and now. Our fifth story on the countdown, President Bush, happy habeas corpus day. First thing this morning, the president signed into law the Military Commissions Act of 2006, which does away with habeas corpus, the right of suspected terrorists or anybody else to know why they have been imprisoned, provided the president does not think it should apply to you and declares you an enemy combatant. Further, the bill allows the CIA to continue using interrogation techniques so long as they do not cause what is deemed, quote, serious physical or mental pain. And it lets the president to ostensibly pick and choose which parts of the Geneva Convention to obey. Though to hear him describe this, this repudiation, the freedoms for which all our soldiers have died, is a good thing. This bill spells out specific, recognizable offenses that would be considered crimes in the handling of detainees. So that our men and women who question captured terrorists can perform their duties to the fullest extent of the law. And this bill complies with both the spirit and the letter of our international obligations. Leading Democrats view it differently. Senator Ted Kennedy calling this seriously flawed. Senator Patrick Leahy saying it's, quote, a sad day when the rubber stamp Congress undercuts our freedoms. And Senator Russ Feingold adding that we will look back on this day as a stain on our nation's history. Outside the White House, a handful of individuals protested the law by dressing up as Abu Ghraib abuse victims and terror detainees. Several of them got themselves arrested, though they were apparently quickly released, despite being already dressed for Gitmo. To assess what this law will truly mean for us all, I'm joined by Jonathan Turley, professor of constitutional law at George Washington University. As always, sir, great thanks for your time. Thanks, Keith. I want to start by asking you about a specific part of this act though, that lists one of the definitions of an unlawful enemy combatant as, quote, a person who, before, on, or after the date of the enactment of the Military Commissions Act of 2006, has been determined to be an unlawful enemy combatant by a combatant status review tribunal or another competent tribunal established under the authority of the President or the Secretary of Defense. Does that not basically mean that if Mr. Bush or Mr. Rumsfeld say so, anybody in this country, citizen or not, innocent or not, can end up being an unlawful enemy combatant? It certainly does. In fact, later on, uh, it says that if you even give material support to an organization that the president deems is connected to one of these groups, you too can be an enemy combatant. And the fact that he appoints this tribunal is meaningless. You know, standing behind him at the signing ceremony was his attorney general who signed a memo that said that you could torture people, that you could do uh, harm to them to the point of organ failure or death. So if he appoints someone like that to be attorney general, you can imagine who he's going to be putting on this board. 